It was 1938. The Great Depression gripped the nation. And a 17-year-old kid was headed to Washington, D.C. from Cincinnati, Ohio, on foot. He had $3 in his pocket, a suitcase, and 525 miles to go. At about the same time, seven motor court owners were worried. They desperately needed to find a way to keep their businesses afloat in the midst of a failed economy. The solution? If they had a referral system and a set of quality and service standards for their properties, they could fix most of the problems that plagued their businesses. So they formed a membership organization called Quality Courts United to do just that. Little did anyone know that Stuart Bainham would eventually grow this small venture into the largest hotel chain in the world and change the shape of the industry forever. When Stuart crossed the Lincoln Memorial Bridge into D.C., he went right to work. He enrolled in a business program at Washington Missionary College, now Washington Adventist University. He found work as a plumber's helper by day, and at night, he worked a second job in the college print shop. The young Stuart Bainham also fell in love when in the summer of 1938, Jane Goyne caught his eye at a soda fountain, just like in the movies. They were married on June 8, 1941, at the home of friends. Things were pretty tight back then. He had to borrow a jacket from a friend for the ceremony. His work as a master plumber was going well, but it was wartime. Things were tough, and he had to make some decisions. He left college after only one year because of time and money pressures, and set up his own business out of his Tacoma Park home. First, installing water heaters, and then heating systems. It wasn't easy. The business was competitive. And Stewart decided that to be successful, he had to build for himself as an investment. He built his first hotel in 1957, the Park Silver in Silver Spring, Maryland. Stewart saw the business advantages of being affiliated with a well-known brand. And he turned his attention to the Quality Courts Motel Group. It was the same Quality Courts that had formed while Stewart was making his long trek from Cincinnati to Washington, D.C. Stewart Bainham applied to have the Park Silver included in the Quality Courts Group. At first, his application was rejected. In typical Bainham fashion, he immediately flew to Florida, met with the chairman of Quality's board, and personally convinced him to have the Park Silver accepted. To its credit, Quality Courts recognized the talents of this young visionary named Stuart Bainham, and in 1961, he was invited to join the board of directors. As a board member and an owner of several hotels, Stewart recommended that Quality move to a for-profit structure. They began franchising. They added to their many industry firsts by guaranteeing reservations for travelers. They offered the industry's first prepaid telephone reservations. Still, there was plenty of room for growth, and Stewart made another bold offer to the board. He proposed a merger of his motels, which operated under the name Park Consolidated, into Quality Court's motels. His proposal was straightforward. Quality had the opportunity to grow, and who better to lead Quality on an aggressive growth path than someone with a proven track record in the business? He showed the board how his hotels had gained more equity in a year and a half than Quality had gained in five years. He described the strong central management organization he had developed, and he promised to provide the same dynamic leadership to Quality. Although it took some convincing and more bold moves, the shareholders agreed. And on December 15, 1967, the merger was approved. And Stewart was named president of Quality Courts, giving him and Park Consolidated majority control of the company. His first move was to move the company's headquarters from Daytona Beach to Silver Spring, Maryland. His second was to grow aggressively through acquisitions and by adding more services for guests and hotel owners. Within a year of the merger, Quality had become the largest association of independent operators in the world. 
and within three years, Quality had dramatically expanded its ownership base, hotel operations, and sales of hotel furnishings, equipment, and supplies. They established new firsts for the industry, including providing guests with a 24-hour toll-free reservation system. They invested more than a million dollars in national marketing and promotion to leverage the strength of the industry's first distribution system. And they focused on recruiting and training. In 1970, Quality expanded internationally by establishing Quality Motels of Canada, followed by a European division headquartered in Brussels. At the time, Quality was both an owner and operator of motels, as well as a franchiser. But it was the franchising business that offered the most opportunity. So in 1972, Stewart began to shift the business to a pure franchising model, unique in the industry even to this day. In 1981, Quality created one of the most successful and enduring hotel brands in the history of the lodging industry, Comfort Inn. The first Comfort Inn hotel opened in Atlanta in 1981. They pioneered another new concept for the industry, market segmentation, with three distinct groups of hotels ranging from budget to mid-tier to luxury. The success of quality was undeniable. They were opening a new property every other day, and more growth was on the horizon. In 1983, Quality introduced the Sunburst Central Reservation System. In the first year of operation, it accounted for 23% of all room sales delivered to franchisees. Stuart Bainham would end up serving another four years at the helm of Quality International as president and CEO of the company until 1981 and chairman of the board from 1972 to 1987. By the end of his tenure, the company you know today as Choice Hotels International had delivered more incremental new business to its hotels than any other franchise system in the world and had pioneered more industry firsts than any other hotel company. Stuart Bainham, the founder and visionary behind Choice Hotels International, the 2010 recipient of the American Hotel and Lodging Association Hospitality Heritage Award, and the man who shaped the face of the industry as we know it today.